All right, how are you doing? It's really been a great week of inspiration from ladies, especially in our series of Women in Aviation. I'm hoping, and it is my wish, that you have been inspired from wherever you are. If you've been watching on YouTube or you watched on C24, uh, that is our app, or you have just been uh, you know, listening to the radio, definitely it's my hope and prayer that uh, you have been greatly inspired. It is a Friday, and of course, it's now the Friday edition of One on One, and we sum it up again with yet another lady who's going to inspire you. She's none other than a female Martel Media sports journalist, Asha Komugisha. Welcome to One on One. Thank you so much. We're here to understand how you even got there because most people feel like the sporting field is a male-dominated industry. When you're talking football, many people are always like, this is a men's thing. When you find a lady talking football or sports, you'll always see like people will be surprised or shocked. So first of all, before we get into that, could you tell us just how you even got yourself in this particular uh, sector? Because you work for big names like Supersport, you work with for The Guardian UK, The New Times, mm -hmm. writing for them sports stories and filing sports stories. How did you get there? Well, um, growing up, really, I was a sports girl. Mm -hmm. I did practically everything. I did athletics, I played netball just like any other girl. Um, I played volleyball, so that's where the interest started. So for me, um, it's something I've grown up doing and then I have all these crazy brothers where, I mean, they have the remote. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> so you have no option but to watch football on the weekends or to watch Sky Sports at 1 p.m. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it was just something that I grew up. So your family environment molded you into who you are today. Yes. And, and so maybe, how easy was that um, uh, and, and what, what, what did your parents say because you understand that at the end of the day sometimes we've, have, we've had parents who have in one way or another determined what their children have become at the end of the day. So for you, you have your brothers who you say kept you glued to TV watching football most of the time and, and impacting you to who you are today. What about your parents? What role did they play? Well, my mom was very supportive. Um, I mean, if anything I want to do, she would want to support me and she would tell me, keep going. Mm -hmm. um, you can be whoever you want to be. So the platform was always right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and, and so this is a lesson you're calling on for other parents. Like you, They all don't have to be supportive. Yeah. Whether I, I mean, um, we, we are in a in a generation where parents keep telling you to um, maybe you have to be a doctor, you mm, have to be mm -hmm. an engineer, you have to be a lawyer, and if you're none of the three, then you're a failure. But um, it is, it's not like I was daft in, in school. I, for example, in primary, I was, I was always number one in, in, um, in, in school. So um, it's not that I'm not, I cannot be, I cannot do medicine, mm -hmm. but I don't want to be a doctor. I want to travel the world, I want to tell people stories, I want to write, I want to be there, to be there in the moment, to, you know, there's nothing that beats, for example, seeing an athlete work so hard and get to the podium. Mm -hmm. That for me, um, there's some stories I can't even write. Like I'll, I'll be you so get emotional. so emotional. Yeah. Have you ever literally been emotional on a story and you never even wrote it? <laughs> Yeah, for example, the story of Valens Ndaisenga last year when he won the two Diranda. Mm -hmm. I was blown away because I have seen this boy start from the academy, Adrian Yoshuti's academy. Mm -hmm. I've seen him start from zero. Mm -hmm. And now he won the two of Rwanda. Like, that is, even when I speak about it, for me, it's... um. It's a humbling moment it's to a humbling tell moment. a story like that. Mm -hmm. So you, th that's exactly what you wanted from the word go, from, from the time you decided that this is the career I want to follow. But was that the only thing? Was, was there something that was major for you that didn't work out and then you decided now to take this one? Because most of us, when we are young, some of us say, I want to be a pilot. Mm -hmm. I want to be you know, an architect. But then we end up in a different field. So was being a sports journalist the thing that you always said when someone asked you when you were young, that who do you want to be when you grow up? Absolutely no. Mm -hmm. No, I didn't even, uh, I won't tell you that I read news um, at, in front of a school parade, no. I didn't do anything like that. It's just one day I was at church and um, 
someone came and sat next to me and you know we started talking and he told me he hosted a show um, a sports show and then you know I, I, I told him okay that's very interesting I play basketball I was playing in the basketball league so I told him I could send you results every week and uh, maybe you can speak them out or you know say read them out in the news and then he said no actually when I listen to you I think you have a good voice mm -hmm. so I was like okay that's very weird mm -hmm. and then he told me you could come to our show and um, sit um, and and you know say something about basketball so I told him no zero I've, I've never thought about being a sports journalist and I can't because when I was growing up radio you know radio personalities yes, they're yes. big people in society so I said no I, I don't think I can do something like that mm -hmm. and uh, he told me give it you know give it a thought and I did for three weeks and then I came and sat in studio this was in Uganda mm -hmm. and um uh, the, st the show was really hosted by two of the biggest sports journalists in, in Uganda, uh, Max Ali and uh, Joseph Kavleta, and I was literally shivering. I was like, oh my gosh, so I'm actually sitting with the, With zero experience. Yeah, with zero experience. Mm -hmm. So um, one of them, Max Ali, he's like, oh, welcome to the show. So, you know, he's introducing the show. And he's like, um, in studio, we have a visitor. She's called Ash. And I was like, oh my God, <laughs> did he just say my name on radio? <laughs> I, was, I was, you know, very starstruck. But um, with time, they mentored me and uh, Joseph actually asked me to start writing for New Vision mm -hmm. and then I started writing um, through University Sports because um, everything I mean there's about 20 sports writers on the on the desk and literally everyone um, okay not everyone but half of them maybe started writing before I was born yes so here's a scenario where I'm dealing with men um, people who can be my parents mm -hmm and people who have a lot of experience. Of experience with b names already established. B yes, yes, yes. And I, I, I mean, I was not scared. I was like, you know what? I'm going to go for this. This is what I want now. Because mm -hmm. I've always known in life that I wanted to be a writer. Mm -hmm. But then I wanted to be an author. Like At the same time. Books. Yes, books, yeah. yes. So I didn't know that, OK, I can be a sports journalist. So when I thought about it, I said, I can write. And I know sports because I, I was, like I said, I was playing basketball in the National League and for actually the top team. Mm -hmm. We had won the league um, th the year before. So I was like, I think I can do this. And look at yourself today. <laughs> Working for Super Sport, <laughs> filing stories for uh, the, the, the Guardian UK. Mm -hmm. You've interviewed big names, Usain Bolt. Mm -hmm. You've interviewed Seth Blatter. Mm -hmm. You've interviewed the, the, the Williams, mm -hmm. Kobe Bryant. Mm -hmm. What does it say when you look back at, at, at that particular story? Story of a young lady who has zero experience in the field of reporting in sports mm -hmm. and getting to where you are today what do you see what do you what, what, what are the things that you say wow this this indeed is, is something well um, I think it's about passion because I remember um, when I like I said, I started with university sports, so I was very lucky to have, um, th there's a program that uh, the International Sports Journalist uh, Association had. They were looking for young reporters across the world, so mm -hmm. they needed two reporters from each continent. And I applied, and uh, I was selected alongside with the Senegalese girl, and we went to the World University Games in uh, 2011 in China. And when I got there, this was my moment, and I said, I will not let go. I will have to use this platform, and it will take me to the next level. So um, we were, I mean, <laughs> there's writers from Nicaragua, mm -hmm. from uh, Germany, from Canada, from everywhere. And I mean, you know when you're African and you get to that level, maybe people think that, oh, OK, so an African can yes, actually. can also do <laughs> sports. Also do actually, a lady. Like yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> so anyway, they gave me a very good um, platform, the AIPS president, um, Gianni Merlo. I will never forget what he did for me. And then, of course, my uh, mentor, Evelyn Water. She's Kenyan. Yes. Sure you know yes, her. Yes. Um, they gave me a platform. They put me in the right path. So for me, covering the World University Games, which is um, one of the biggest sports events in the world, um, it gave me, it opened my eyes, you know, and I never looked back because that opportunity right there presented another for me to cover the London Olympics. Mm. And This was in 2012. Yeah, 2012. Mm. And no, 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 there's nothing big as the Olympics. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about um, tickets were sold out mm -hmm. for the 100 meters uh, men's event mm -hmm. months mm -hmm. before mm -hmm. the event, about eight months or five months before. Mm -hmm. You know, so sitting there and <laughs> I think you saw the clip um, yes, Usain yes. Bolt when he was, you know, about to begin the race 
person, yes. the girl who handled um, his clothes, yes. uh, the container. Mm -hmm. She was starstruck. I think she almost dropped it, you know. Yes. Even you know him talking to her. So for me to sit in a press conference and actually interview, interview him, people, yes. um, even I mean the U.S. I, I played basketball, so for me to interview LeBron James, Kobe Bryant. Oh my God! It Th these are major milestones for you in your in your career. Mm. But then, when you look back and then you see uh, not so many of Asha Komogisha's in terms of the female sports journalists, what then is wrong here? Because the story you tell shows a story of just passion, mm -hmm. and and a few people here and there who hold your hand and and tell you, "Come on, walk with me these steps." Mm -hmm. You see. So what is wrong? What is missing? Well, the thing is, uh, I think we don't have mentors. Mm -hmm. There's not many mentors. I, um, I, I think in Kenya, there's about 10 female sports journalists. So mm -hmm. there, it's fine, you know. Um, in Uganda, a few. In Rwanda, well, we have to hold each other's hands, you know. Um, so we don't have mentors, people who are about uh, maybe 40, who can tell you, look, this is what you can do. Mm. Um, so I think that it's time that women come out, girls, come up and, and, and you know we work together and help them and mentor them I, I don't think that it's a, a males okay it is a males world but if you know what you're doing and you know what you want you will definitely get there mm -hmm. I mean I, I didn't know about rugby but um, I actually went to play rugby so that I can understand rugby so you have to really get immerse yourself into that environment for you to understand how to even tell the story of that particular yes thing. because there's some things about rugby that you will not read in a book you have to experience them on the pitch and then you will understand the game mm -hmm. cricket mm -hmm. same thing Mm -hmm. I had to like go to the field and actually try and bat and, and see what it means to be in a game situation so that when I'm reporting something, I don't plainly say, oh, you know, maybe Amavubi failed to do this, you mm -hmm. know. Mm -hmm. You, have, you to have to understand how to express that to express and put it into context as yes. well because you understand the game. Yes. Now, uh, therefore, what then are we doing? What, what are the next steps? At least we understand. We know the problem where it is. Mm -hmm. You say that we don't have many mentors or that much uh, of people who want or would, who would hold the hands of other young ladies who want to be in your shoes. Mm -hmm. But today you're there where you are in your position. What are the little things that you're doing to at least change this story? Well, I, I've gotten messages from people on Facebook and Twitter um, trying to talk to me and say, okay, so here I am, I want to do something like this. And I'm like, okay, we can meet up and uh, we can have a chat and uh, I can advise you on, on what to do. Um, some of them are actually boys and they come to the newsroom at New Times and um, they want to be mentored. So of course New Times has a, a platform where um, interns can come in or freelancers mm. and you know we can guide them you know little by little because really honestly um, I think I have a lot of experience mm -hmm. and I would love to share that uh, 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 are, are people really tapping into this because most of the time we have had uh, p you know I could see even guardian angels mm -hmm. amongst us mm -hmm. we've had people who are able to take us to places mm -hmm. but we've never made good use of them do you think they're making good use of you so no, far? I don't think. Mm -hmm. I don't think because I think I know too much that, uh, okay, not really too much, mm -hmm. but I think I have a lot that I know in my mind that I can share with other people. And uh, if I only got the chance mm -hmm. to, um, you know, talk to some of them. This is an opportunity. They need to. They need to grab this. They need to tap that from you. Mm -hmm. All right. But then when you go out and put your cameras or put your recorders when, when, when you go to a big event, like you said, the Olympics, the press conference, is there and and, and 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 there you are you're shooting your question or even you just appear within the group and you see all these men how does that make you feel do you ever feel sort of intimidated have you ever been in a situation where you felt uh -uh, I'm, I'm, I'm in a very kind of funny environment and I'm not feeling myself I, I may not be able to ask this question because I'm amongst men who seem to know it all and I look bad have you ever been in such a situation well I remember um, at the Olympics the US actually beat Nigeria it was a record-breaking moment and um, <laughs> I mean Nigeria was really humiliated in that game and here was Coach K. Coach K is a legend. He's a legendary basketball coach. He has achieved so much with Duke University. Mm -hmm. And um, for me to, uh, you know, to interview him and just, I mean, the first place when I was in, uh, you know, in the press conference, I saw old men 
and, and earlier on, we had had an event where they were awarding, uh, you know, sports journalists who have covered about 30 Olympics. And I mean 30 mm -hmm. Olympics. And that time you, you had covered how many? One. <laughs> Hello. It was my first. <laughs> yes. You know? Yes. So I was thinking, okay. And then, you know, I'm seeing um, Sekou Smith, he writes for Yahoo, and I, I mean, I was following him on Twitter, and then I step up to him, I tell him, okay, hello, how are you, you know, and then he talks back to me, and I'm like, oh my gosh, so how exactly am I going to ask a question in this press conference mm -hmm. when I'm seeing all these names that I read about, you know? But I held myself together, and I said, you know what, this should inspire me. Mm -hmm. This should inspire me to go to the next level. And you did ask your question. And I did ask my question. And nobody turned and said, oh. who is this, mm -hmm. you know? <laughs> right. I mean, um, the there was no, East, of course, there was no East African team at the Olympics, but it was Nigeria, and you expect only American journalists and the Nigerian journalists to mm -hmm. be asking questions. Mm -hmm. But I specifically asked, you know, um, a question that was not really African, but you know, just asking Coach K. At least it, it at least it put you out there. You 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 you, you had your moment. Yeah. But then having your moment versus also growing this much you've grown mm -hmm. and also holding the hands of the the, 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 the the other people who would love to be in your position and then you look back at yourself do you ever feel that you are being well appreciated in terms of uh, maybe awards for for, 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 for for young female journalists who are extremely doing it so that it also motivates others do you feel that your story is being well appreciated well, um, I've never really um, gotten an award or anything for <laughs> the work I've done. And, but for me, it's really that I am able to do it because I am living my dream. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I told you I, w I didn't set out to be a sports journalist, but the minute I started my journey, I am right where I want to be, and I've actually exceeded where I wanted to be. Because, mm -hmm. of course, I always wanted to work for Super Sport, and when I got my moment, I was, you know, I was like, okay, so I'm actually going to work for Super Sport. Mm -hmm. Wow, mm -hmm. you know. So whether they celebrate you or not, <laughs> or not for you, no. you don't, you don't have any any problem. Yeah, my main, um, like I told you, for me is telling the story of the athlete. Mm -hmm. There are some people whose stories will never be told, but when you step up to do such stories, it, it just gives me enough. Mm -hmm. um, it keeps me going. But would that help? Would that help if, if if they came and said, all right, let's look around and 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 sell celebrate some of our unsung heroes mm -hmm. and heroines, those who are doing extraordinary things that probably people have always felt are not to be done by this specific type of people. Do you think that would help? Do you think that would inspire more people to be who you are today? Definitely. I think um, I would be honored. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I would really be honored and I think that um, so many people would like, I, I, I mean, when you're in, in the limelight a bit, you know, people will say, okay, I think I can actually do this, you know, because, I mean, there's some stories that have been really encouraging, you know, I, you've interviewed Esther Mbabazi, mm. that is a really encouraging story, and I'm sure so many girls out there are very, um, you know, motivated challenged. and challenged, they're like, wow, so a girl can actually be a pilot, mm. you know? Mm. So I think it, it can be an inspiring moment for mm. so many other girls mm. out there. So, so normally when, when, when you're out there, uh, uh, let's talk about now your growing up again. Yeah. You said the, 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 the sort of lighter part where when you were growing, your, young, uh, your, your brothers would <laughs> make you, you know, because they have the remote automatically, you have to watch what they want to watch, and that was football. Mm. But then as you grew up, you got into the age of being a lady and, 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 and the type of stage where young ladies just want to look good, want to be good, want to be associated with just fashion, mm -hmm. makeup and all that. But then here you are just focused on sports, focused on telling the stories of, 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 of sporting personalities. How was that like for you, you know, during that age and the groups that you used to hang around with? Did that affect you? Did that make them you know, call you a tomboy? Would, would it make you look like you're different from them? How did you deal with that stage? Well, um, definitely I was a tomboy because I told you um, I was very involved with uh, sports. Literally in my primary school, I did everything. I did golf, I did cycling, I did volleyball, I did everything, you know. And then in high school, I decided to concentrate on uh, basketball. So, um, of course, in school, when you play basketball, 
you know, there's always that mentality, especially in Africa, that um, when you play a sport, you're a tomboy, mm -hmm. you know? So, and there's nothing you can do about it, by the way, because mm -hmm. in school you have short hair, so yes. here you are in short hair, in shorts and a sleeveless. <laughs> and you're running um, around with a and ball. And you're running around with a ball. Um, definitely people judge you, and uh, you know, the girls, again, who love the whole fashion and dresses, and they'll be like, ah, you know, this this is a tomboy. But for me, um, I was really focused on, on you know, going that direction, I didn't look back, mm. I know, I, and I will not regret it. Do you, did you ever lose some friends because of just that? Um, actually, playing basketball in school was cool because mm -hmm. we used to, you know, go out for tournaments every weekend. So, and it's a boarding school, so everyone thinks, "Oh my God!" So mm -hmm. here we are. But um, and also the achievements, because um, the school I was in were actually national champions, and we would represent um, uh, Uganda in uh, East African Games, and would get to travel a lot, really. And uh, there's a time I was selected for an under-18 camp in South Africa. So, I mean, just that would be cool but after that it was a bit you know you have to deal with it yeah you have to deal with in, it in, a, in another different uh, aspect yeah. then you know when you when we hear this we hear that you sort of have been in the winning team from the beginning in terms of sports mm -hmm. you know you've had friends who have mentored you mm -hmm. Uh, you've you've been in a school that has been winning mm -hmm. in terms of the games that you've been playing mm -hmm. and and here you are today also still having friends in terms of those who you follow on Twitter or those you meet in these big events so does that mean that I need to always have this kind of lifestyle mm -hmm. for me to be where Asha is for that young lady who has no opportunity to be or have those uh, privileges that you had how can they make it well I think that um you have to understand your purpose in life. And once you understand something like that, everything will be put in line with that purpose. Mm -hmm. Trust me. God will make a way so that you meet the right people at the right time, people who will benefit your career and people who will move you to the next level. And he will give you the knowledge, everything. Because I have never studied journalism. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I didn't study journalism in school. I just studied hands-on. Like, I'm just going to the field, and yes, I know the sport, but now how do I report the sport? So I, I just have to understand the basics. I need to know the people I'm talking to. I need to know the game. I need to know who to quote and what story I want to tell. Mm. Because, for example, at uh, when we went for the World University Games and we were, you know, doing this... Um, um, uh, the mentoring course, uh, we were not writing stories like uh, Germany has beaten Argentina. No? Yes, yes. No, no, that's not the story you're writing. I remember my first story was about the food. Mm -hmm. There were over 6,000 dishes in the dining hall. Mm -hmm. That was my story. So you can look at the other side. You when everybody at else is pointing at, at, at the winning and, the, the, losing, winning and the, losing. the losing, you focus on something else that everybody seems to have ignored. Yes. That's, the, that's the trick. Yes. Right. So you, you have to tell a story that not everyone is telling. For example, Rwanda beats Libya. But what's the story? Mm -hmm. The story is Dadi Bidori. So what is it about Dadi Bidori? Mm -hmm. So you can take a different angle from that story. You brought it. Let's talk about it. What do you think? How do you think we handle this dirty bureau issue? I think that uh, it was really, <laughs> it was uh, it very frustrating for Rwandan fans, especially, um, and the country at large. It was put, uh, it put the country on a, you know, different limelight. Mm -hmm. uh, Rwanda is used to very positive <laughs> stories. <laughs> stories and uh, something like that. But it's, um, it's something that had been going on for four decades. You know, Rwanda had always gotten uh, Congolese players, given them nationality, and uh, so that they can play for the national team. And that's what actually took Rwanda to the African Cup of Nations anyway in mm. 2004. Mm. Um, so <laughs> it, it put us in a bad light. But then, do you think that there was a failure in the in the, in, in, in the part of the sports journalists who? who took too long or probably did not expose this mm -hmm. enough? Or do you think that there was exposure done, but then it all fell on deaf ears? Where do you think or who do you think, if we were to sit back and say, okay, right, we, if, if, we were, if we wanted to have ignore, I mean, uh, avoided this, mm -hmm. these are the things that we should have done. Do you think that sports journalists like you mm -hmm. maybe failed in a, in a way for not exposing some of these issues earlier? 
or did you expose and then it fell in deaf ears? No, it's something that, like I said, that Rwanda has always been doing and uh, actually Rwandans were enjoying the moment enjoying the moment that these Congolese players were actually playing for the good of the country. No one was complaining mm -hmm. until that moment. Mm -hmm. So we didn't see it coming. So I think that um, people were, okay, I, I think that is pretending. Mm. That is pretense because if you look at the squad that played at the Africa Cup of Nations in Tunisia in 2004, how many were Rwandans? How many of those people were born in Rwanda? Mm -hmm. That is ridiculous. Mm. So who's so pretending? Who's pretending here? Generally, everyone. You know, when, when you say that, um, you know, why don't we use Rwandan players from the beginning, mm -hmm. blah, blah, blah. Who scored the goals that led to Rwanda to qualify? to play against Congo Brazzaville. It, it is was those foreigners, it was Daddy himself. Mm -hmm. Rwanda has always had a problem. And at that time, and yeah. at that time, nobody complained. Nobody complained. We only complained when, when now. When, when Rwanda is banned. Mm -hmm. And by the way, if I, Rwanda has always had a problem of strikers. Mm -hmm. I mean, in the last maybe 10 years, there's been a problem. That's why you see Medi Kagere. Mm -hmm. Medi Kagere is Ugandan, mm -hmm. but he's playing. He was playing as a striker for Amavubi. You know, at Sekafa in uh, 2013, the Sekafa Senior Challenge, mm. Rwanda scored just one goal. Mm -hmm. One goal by a player who was gotten from the second division. All right. So we are, we, we, we are a bunch of pretenders. We saw people saying, oh, we have to stop this. Oh, why are we not having uh, academies to just nurture our own people? Oh, we have to fire the entire team at uh, Ferwafa. <laughs> no, 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 no. It's, it's not, it has nothing to do with Ferwafa. Because, OK, I, in that situation, you know, because um, when you look at Cedric uh, Amis, mm -hmm. who, who won a top scorer the season before in 2012, 2013, he's Burundian. Mm -hmm. And how many goals did he have? 14. I think 14 or 17, mm -hmm. but I mean, in a whole season, mm -hmm. those are very few goals. People are scoring 45 goals, mm -hmm. and here we are, less than 20. By the way, consistently, mm -hmm. in the past five years, no random player has scored 20 goals in a season. Right. You see, so there's a problem of strikers, mm -hmm. and, and you cannot blame, um, I mean, the system, you know, for getting other, you know, players to uh, come and to assist come in, that and assist in that particular area, particular department, because mm -hmm. Ugandans are very good uh, mm -hmm. footballers, you know, that even the Congolese, they bring that flair. Mm -hmm. So, but it's a decision that has already been made, and I think that um, Ferrafa can move on, and, and, you know, I mean, the, the under-15 league is starting over the weekend, mm -hmm. and uh, there's things that have been put in place, and in 10 years, the results will be there. Mm. But as of now, mm -mm. we still can't. We, we still can't do without them. Yeah, it's. Uh, it's. I mean, of the five who are who are dismissed from uh, the Amavubi, four were, were forwards. Mm. Yeah, only Peter Otema. So that will affect the team. Yeah, definitely. It, it will affect the Talking team. Talking of, of, of Amavubi, we, we had the issue of the coach. Mm -hmm. and, and, and there's been debate that it is now time to have a local coach. Mm -hmm. Do you think it's, 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 it makes sense, that debate? No, 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 no. You see, in the last four decades, Rwanda has actually not had um, uh, a, a, a local coach, apart from Eric Nshimiman, mm -hmm. who actually only lasted a year. And in that one year, Rwanda didn't even score five goals. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Rwanda didn't even achieve much. So we are not ready for a local coach? No, and I've talked to the local coaches. I've talked to top four, the top four uh, local coaches. They're not ready. They're telling me they are not ready to be national team coaches. So that argument has been closed. C'est fini. C'est fini. And it is that on that particular <laughs> note that we also that, that do c'est fini for the show. Yeah. For now. <laughs> <laughs> Asha Kumugisha, thank you so much mm. for your inspirational words. Thank you so much for your story. It's really inspirational. I'm hoping that uh, definitely it has touched someone somewhere and they will go, they're going to push themselves even more mm. to achieve whatever goals they want to achieve. Mm. You're smart. Mm. Thank you. All right. Mm. Keep up the good work. And of course, we will be there to support and also hold the hands mm. of other journalists or other people who would like to be in the shoes that we're in. Right. That's the only responsibility we have. All right. Right? Thank you so much, Thank you so much for your time. All right. Cheers. There you have it. Mm -hmm. The weekend edition of One on One comes to a wrap on that particular note. Thank you so much. It's been a very inspirational week from the theme of the women in aviation and, of course, wrapping it up with Asha Kamugisha, a female multimedia sports journalist. All the men who have always been saying they know sports. Mm -hmm. I'm sure today you've been challenged. Mm -hmm. There you have it. Goodbye for now. As always, Eugene Anangwe is my name. Goodbye for now.